So, what do we have right here? This is the ORM, model CSPA1 amplifier, stereo hi-fi amplifier system. Now, you have seen this before, and uh, this has been uh, serving me really well as a headphone amplifier over the uh, past year. I think I already had it a year. And um, it, uh, well, unfortunately, it was causing me uh, problems from time to time, contact-related problems, and uh, I was never sure of what it was, and I never managed to get it fixed, even though I have... Uh, since uh, sprayed a lot of contact spray into this thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, whenever a contact problem came up, what I did was I was banging the amplifier, just hit it onto, uh, onto the top cover to uh, kind of try to get uh, the, well, whatever channel was just uh, gone uh, to get it back. Another problem was this amplifier, it was standing on top of my uh, computer tower. Um, and the computer tower is standing in the f on the floor in my room. I'm just showing this as an example. And, um, well, I like to forget that I'm wearing headphones, and I like to forget that those headphones are not wireless headphones. So, guess what? I very often had this thing being pulled down from the computer tower by the headphone cord, and this thing always fell down onto the floor. And, uh, well, <laughs> I thought, uh, just a couple of days ago, I thought uh, that, um, well, I, I thought that was it. Because when I uh, picked it up for, well, I don't know, the tenth time, maybe, after dropping it, it was just uh, doing very loud humming noises. And uh, so I unhooked it and brought it over here into the other house, into my workshop, because I wanted to fix it. And, uh, well, tonight I thought I would uh, have a bit of a look, but uh, guess what? <laughs> it's working! I mean, it has a, uh, a TDA2004 integrated circuit inside of there. It's a uh, two-channel amplifier integrated circuit. And, uh, of course, those uh, modern ICs are protected against basically everything, so... Uh, even if it gets just uh, the plain, uh, the plain unrectified, unfiltered AC straight from the transformer, uh, I guess if you get that fixed, the chip is still going to work. But uh, in this case, uh, well, let's give it a try. Well, as you can hear, for yet another time, it managed to fix itself somehow. It does work. So, uh, well, anyway, I do want to go ahead and uh, take a look inside, uh, just to make sure that nothing's badly wrong inside of there. Uh, what I can already tell is it, uh, once again, did uh, the, the classic old thing. Uh, when dropping it to... Uh, to, onto the floor. It always fa falls onto this side right here. And uh, the mounting points of the transformer are so weak that uh, each time, just by gravity and the, the just the shock of uh, hitting the floor, the transformer is always getting bent into this direction. So i got to bend this back for yet another time. And uh, I have to see if I can figure out a bit of a uh, better solution for that, because... Uh, I guess at some point the mounting uh, the mounting holes are just going to be broken. Uh, just in case you wonder, the music, I recorded that in a church. Uh, organ was playing, 
and uh, along with a trumpet, you've probably heard that. And, uh, well, we were just visiting uh, as tourists, and um, I like organ music, so I just got my uh, camcorder going, and later on I just extracted the audio from the video, and uh, well, that's it. It's not too much of a good recording, but at least it's there. So, uh, anyway, that's it, I guess. I now want to take this apart and uh, see what's going on inside. Now this is what I meant. You can see the transformer is all bent to this side, and it's actually it's actually loose. So uh, uh, I guess I should uh, try to screw it back on. But uh, <laughs> that's it. Just bend it back, and that's it. But uh, yeah. as you can see, there are just some little standard screws. Oops, little standard screws down in there. So. Uh, those won't hold this thing on very well at all. But uh, anyway, now I want to try to get this uh, get this taken apart. Let's see what's going on on the underside of the circuit board. Well, that was quite easy. Just a couple of screws, and that was it. And the uh, whole thing just comes out. I do want to redo some soldering joints on the circuit board. Some things are not uh, quite up to my standards. Um, as you can see, uh, did make a little mistake down there. It's looking kind of messed up. You might be able to see the resistor wire right in the center of the picture, right there. That's not uh, that's not right. Um, kind of compared this uh, whole thing with the uh, circuitry that. Uh, uh, all right, now I already closed that thing. Uh, let me just get this thing back up. There it is, uh, the data sheet of the TDA 2004 by SGS Thompson. Uh, they just uh, went ahead and used the same exact uh, circuit that uh, they suggest for this chip down there. But. Uh, now uh, they uh, they actually they could have gone uh, they could have gone cheap on this thing a little more than they already did uh, like the output capacitors those are having a capacity of 2,200 microfarads and the service um, not the service manual the data sheet tells you that uh, you can uh, you can go from a uh, thousand up to uh, a 2,200 microfarads so they could have used uh, cheaper components, I guess, um, and, uh, and there is that ridiculous little heatsink thing. Of course, it uses the bottom part of the housing as an extension. Uh, what I want to do, uh, just because I happen to come across one, I want to replace the mains filter capacitor. Uh, the thing that's currently in there is a uh, 2,200 microfarad 25 volt capacitor. I found this 3,300 microfarad capacitor uh, running at 25 volts. So I want to see if I can put this thing into there. Um, once again, another proof that uh, these uh, chips are almost impossible to destruct. Uh, the uh, data sheet says the maximum voltage for this chip is. Uh, is 18 volts absolute maximum voltage now <laughs> just went ahead and measured the voltage across the filter cap and uh, that turns out to be a uh, little over 19 volts so uh, yeah it's not much but uh, definitely definitely too high <laughs> well anyway it does work so uh, why bother so now I want to do what I just described and there it is, all back together. I fixed all the problems that I noticed, and I built in that new filter capacitor. It did improve the uh, peak power output a little bit. Of course, you can always tell when a uh, power supply is at the end of its capabilities. When the, uh, when the power LED starts uh, going dim, and uh, the point at which that started to happen uh, did shift a little bit. So, um, definitely improved something. So, uh, if I now press play, 
Nothing happens. Stupid computer. As you can hear, it still works. And, uh, well, for what it is, it does sound pretty good. So, I guess that's it for this video. And, uh, oh, well, this is probably going to be the last video I will be making as a teenager. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video, and uh, see you again soon.